In this video, we take our Azure automation game up a notch with hybrid workers and remote PowerShell. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraldos. I got some really good questions from my previous video on Azure Automation Hybrid Workers and doing a follow-up to cover some what turns out to be common scenarios. Before that, please like, subscribe, click the bell icon for new content, become a member for early access to videos at free while private, and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Azure AD at udemy.com. The links are below. Also, let me know what you think in the comments below. This video is a result of comments by viewers like you. Back to it, let's quickly recap what hybrid workers are. Hybrid workers extend the functionality of Azure automation outside of Azure and into on-premises or multi-cloud environments. It does this by adding agent called user workers to computers inside a private network. We add one or more of these user workers to a worker group. Then we target the worker group with our automation runbook job. One of the user workers picks up the runbook and runs it locally thereby extending Azure automation into our private networks. If you need more details, check out the video that goes over Azure Arc enabled hybrid workers. The link is at the end of this video. Here's the problem that some of you faced with this solution. Let's say an environment has two hybrid workers in a work group. The runbook job checks for a file and processes it if it exists. In this example, a user uploads a file to one of the workers but when the job runs, it runs on the other worker and the file doesn't get processed because the file doesn't exist on that worker. While the hybrid worker extends automation jobs outside of Azure, it's not intended to run on every computer the runbook interacts with. It's more of a gateway into your environment with multiple workers providing high availability. We need to write runbooks so the results will be the same no matter what hybrid worker it's ran on. Let's say we have two workers in a work group and 10, 100, or even 1,000 computers that need log files copied to a storage account. If we add all of these computers to a worker group, the job is still only going to run on one of them. Also, creating 10, 100, or more worker groups and adding each computer to its own group won't scale well. Instead, we write a script so it interacts with all of the computers from the hybrid worker. We can use PowerShell remoting to run commands it against systems on our private network. In this scenario, we identify the computers to run the commands against and create a runbook to target them with remote code execution. That way, it doesn't matter what hybrid worker the job runs on, the script simply targets one or more computers. If the user uploads a file to one file server, the script will check that specific server. It doesn't matter what worker the job runs on. There's one small problem with this. The jobs run under the local system context of the hybrid worker. With that, remoting won't work. Don't worry though, it's like Microsoft knew this may be an issue and came up with a solution. We can use credential assets in Azure Automation and use that to authenticate to our remote computers. Let's dive in and get this working. To follow along, you'll need a hybrid worker environment like the one created in the last video. Also, credentials with rights to run remote PowerShell scripts on the on-premises computers. Some organizations disable PowerShell remoting. If that's the case, this won't work. There are four servers in the demo environment, two are hybrid workers and two are targets for the workers. All are domain joined. Let's take a look at the solution in action. We'll start on one of the hybrid workers. I like to start hybrid runbook development on a hybrid worker. This way I can verify the commands will run successfully outside of Azure Automation. Then I copy the code to Azure Automation and add any additional commands for the automation job. One important step is to make sure we add any modules our runbooks require to all hybrid workers in a worker group. We can add modules to our Azure Automation account cloud environment, but that doesn't extend to hybrid workers. Let's add the Active Directory module to this hybrid worker. We'll use the PowerShell command to install it. This installs the Windows feature, RSAT AD PowerShell, and it includes all sub features. Give this a minute to run. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. That finished and now the Windows AD PowerShell tools are installed. Run this on all hybrid workers in the worker group. Next, we'll run a command to get the members of a Windows AD group. I have a group called VPN user. Let's get the names of the group members. This command writes the output group members and then returns the names of all the members of that group. We'll highlight and run this. There's nothing special about this group. It's just an example that shows we can interact with the local Windows AD 
from this hybrid worker. We'll clear the screen. Next, let's interact with a remote computer. This example uses invoke command to run a command on a remote computer. The basic format of the command looks like this. We have invoke command, then we pass in the computer name we want to run against, then it includes a script block where we can place our commands that will run remotely. For this example, we'll run a simple command that returns the host name. Let's highlight and run this section of code. You can also just hit F8 too. The computer name returned is worker target one. And if we just do host name on this machine, we're running it from worker test two. Good, that returned the host name of the remote computer. Let's take this a bit further. Say we had a group of computers. We can create a variable with all of the computers in a list and then feed that into invoke command. Let's see what that looks like. Here we're running the same command, but this time against all of our worker and target computers. Let's clear the screen. And we'll run the block of code. Notice that no matter what hybrid worker the script would run on, it'll return the same results. Let's take this a step further and verify a folder exists on our target computers. We'll clear the screen again. This command runs on our target computers and checks to see if a folder called logs exists at the root of the C drive. Let's run that next. One computer has it and the other doesn't. Let's fix up this code with some comments and code that adds the folder if it doesn't exist. Here we're running it on our two target computers. We use test path to see if the logs folder exists. If it does, we get output saying that the logs folder exists. If it doesn't, it will create the logs folder. Let's run that. The computer worker target one had the folder, worker target two didn't, but now it does. That folder was created. Great, that's working. We can interact with Windows AD as well as other computers from the hybrid worker. Let's move the code snippets we're working on into a run book and verify it can run as an automation job. I'm also gonna remove the logs folder off from worker target two. That way we can verify the folder is created with the automation job. Let's move into our Azure automation account and create the run book. Here we are in Azure Automation. Let's go to Runbooks. We'll create a new one. We'll call this one Remote Commands. We're using PowerShell and 5.1 for the runtime. We'll create. The code used for this runbook is available on GitHub. The link is in the description below. There's also a link to sign up for my newsletter and get updates and promotions. Please consider signing up. This is code we tested on the hybrid worker. So if we save and test this targeting our worker group, it should run, right? Let's test and find out. We'll save. Go to our test pane. Select our worker group and start. We'll give it a minute to finish. We got some failures, let's look at what happened. We got the members of the group. This succeeded because the command was simply reading from Windows AD. Then we have an access denied message for all the invoke command commands, except for worker test one, as well as access errors for the commands to test and create a folder. Why did this happen? When we developed and ran the commands on the hybrid worker, the account used to run PowerShell had rights to run all of the commands. In my example, I was logged in as a domain admin. When the run books run on a hybrid worker as an automation job, it runs under the local system context. We don't need elevated permissions to read from AD, so that succeeded, but we would if we tried to write or update the group. And the command to get the host name did work on worker test one. That's because the job ran on worker test one. So how do we fix this? We need to add credentials for our run book. Let's close this and go back to our automation account. Let's go back to the automation account. 
under Shared Resources, go to Credentials, and we'll add a credential. We'll call this one Posh or PowerShell Remote. Give it a description, on-prem account for PowerShell Remoting, add the account. This account was created specifically for this purpose with rights to remote into those other machines. Notice this is a domain account. And then we add the password. And create. Now that we have the credentials in Azure Automation, we need to tell the runbook to use them. Let's go back to our runbook. We'll edit. We're going to add a command at the top to get the credentials we just added. This gets the credentials with the get automation ps credentials command and assigns it to a variable. Next, we need to update our commands to use the new credentials. We'll use the dash credential switch passing in the credential variable. So for get ad group member, we'll specify the credential. And then for our two invoke commands, we'll do the same thing. Make sure you're not putting it between computer name and computers. We'll do the same for the command that tests for the folder. Let's save and go to the test pane. Select the hybrid worker and start. And again, we'll give it a minute to finish. And now it's working. We got the group members, and then we got the host names for all of the computers we passed in. And finally, we tested for and created a folder. And remember, I deleted that folder after we ran this command the last time. That's great. We can now interact with other computers on our network from our hybrid worker. Let's close the editor. And now we can publish our runbook. With that published, we can run it like any other runbook. That is how to use PowerShell remoting and hybrid workers. Check out the playlist on Azure Automation for more automation goodness. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.